yes this is the look hey friends how's it going welcome to a new reading vlog i filmed this intro already okay but i filmed it with my phone case on and my phone case has like this chain thing at the back of it and it was making a noise and you're gonna hear that little noise in the next clip but i had to i have to redo the intro because you can't it's not even like it can't it's not watchable anyway welcome to a new reading vlog this reading vlog i had no idea what i wanted to do all i knew was that i wanted to film what i was reading for the week because i have the time right now right so to give you context prior to beginning this vlog which will be in the next clip uh i just finished reading the hunger of the gods which is like right here can you see it okay I just finished reading The Hunger of the Gods, and prior to that, I had just finished reading The Oleander Sword by Tasha Suri. First of all, The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne. Incredible. John Gwynne, we need to talk. <laughs> we, we need to talk. How dare you? Anyway, so after reading Hunger of the Gods, The Oleander Sword, I was like, I'm in a mood to read literally everything. Like, I can't make a decision right now because I felt like reading absolutely everything. That's like, <laughs> I was in the mood to read and I, I was in such a big mood to read, I had no idea what I wanted to read. So as you will see soon, I decided to randomly assign numbers to my bookshelves and randomly pick a book, which then resulted in the subsequent choices of books that I chose to read. It's gonna be an interesting, it's, it was interesting filming this. So I hope it's interesting to watch. <laughs> anyway, have fun, subscribe if you would like, and <laughs> God, I don't know, make a cup of tea or a coffee. I feel like it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> okay, so I just Googled this. So between one and 11, this is the shelf number. And that's gonna generate number seven okay that's kind of cool and then we're gonna do between one and number seven which one's that one one two three four five six. Oh, it's the interesting one i've actually read a lot of books on this shelf and yes i can picture them in my head so i think i have i'm gonna say we'll just do one to fifteen because I have a few books on this shelf because they're small paperbacks. So I'm just going to, okay. We're going to generate one to 15. <laughs> 13, okay, let's go check what number 13 is. So that you know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> you're just going based off my word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. These are my mum's and these, I don't count them because the, I've read those, I've read those, I've read that. like I've read all of these two shelves. Okay, now number seven and then we're going to go number 13. So how I'm going to do this, so I've got books at the back there, so I'm going to do like one count and then I'll do the back ones. That, does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. Maybe I overestimated the amount of books on the shelf. Anyway, so I'm doing up to number 13. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, I've read that. Let's redo the count. Actually, wait, let me just redo this because I have more. We'll just do 20, even though I have read a lot of these books, but just for funsies. 19. I feel like I'm gonna read them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five
18. Kim Jae Young. I've already read that. Let's do it again. Generate. Oh. Oh. Okay. Wasn't expecting to start a new series, but I've been meaning to read it. Sounds cool. Let's go for it. So this is the book. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is book one in the Broken Earth trilogy. I've been meaning to read this for a very long time. So this is a good thing. I'm a bit terrified. Wasn't wanting to start a new series, but at the same time I could binge read them maybe. That is if I enjoy this. So I'm gonna start this. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> I finished the fifth season yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why have I taken so long to read it? I am not very articulate. I'm very tired today. So I'll talk more about my thoughts and feelings about fifth season tomorrow. And then I read Verity, which I didn't vlog because uh, that book is for like a book club thing that I <laughs> that I have with my friends. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it here until I talk about it with them. And I know that Emma watches my videos as well. And I don't want to spoil it before she's read it. So I'm not going to talk about Verity by Colleen Hoover. Let's just say... Anyway, <laughs> it was wild and pure chaos. And so that was that. Was that. <laughs> so sorry I didn't vlog it. But I decided that the next book that I'm going to read is... I can't. I have to. I have to. It's book two in the Broken Earth trilogy. It's the Obelisk gate. For some reason, that word is really difficult to say for me. Obelisk. I'm back. My dog just wanted to go outside. He heard something. Anyway, so I have to read book two. I have to. I honestly think I'm going to see if I can finish this entire trilogy this week because the fifth season was just so wonderful, but I have so many questions and I need to know how it ends. So I'm I'm gonna read book two. I'm gonna start book two. <laughs> no, this is basically just gonna be me reading the Broken Earth trilogy. <laughs> so how much fun is this? I feel really good. I don't think going into the Broken Earth trilogy knowing what they are is a good idea. Just go in without knowing anything. Just go in blindly and enjoy it i'll talk more about it tomorrow because i i'm not gonna be able to describe it properly now but i'm gonna start book two and i will keep you updated with all my thoughts and feelings Please go haunt me every single night from a father turns to shoot and Hold me tight, 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 tight All the darkest secrets I have A violet thrown at the bottom of the ocean yeah. Overburden, take the weight off my shoulders I'm begging Sunday morning Yes, I'm sunk to my knees on my own words of solace Quakes and loads of friends by now I see no one They plead innocent, caught red-handed Draw the curtains, balloons are deflated No mercy, yeah That's a crying, a crying for help Help, help me Yes, I cast a spell on myself So, so like, let's quickly talk about the fifth season I... 
don't understand why I took so long to read this book. So let me just grab it. The fifth season. This was amazing. How do I explain it? So you have, technically, you have three perspectives if you want to get technical about it. So you have Essen, you have Demaya and Sainet. And all of these women are at various stages of their life. Uh, Essen is in her 40s. Uh, Demaya is around is either 7 to 10. I don't quite remember. And Sainet is in her late 20s. So I am smiling because like you figure out quickly what the twist is. But anyway. <laughs> and these women live on land that used to be separate land masses, but is now just one gigantic land mass. So it's, I'm guessing, kind of similar to Pangaea, but a smaller scale because we find out later that there might be other land masses that just they're not aware of. And this world have a group of people called Orogenes, 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 I don't know how to pronounce them, like pronounce this term, but they are people capable of tuning into the earth and doing things. They can break the earth, they can create fire, ice, they use like energy, thermal energy, they Honestly, I feel like there's no real limitations to what they can do, which some can argue that maybe that's a bit of a con because like there is literally nothing that they can do, but that they can't do, I should say. But I guess the other side of that is that it takes a lot out of them and sometimes it can take their humanness, <laughs> which... I will talk about later or will I because that's a spoiler I don't want this to be spoilery I kind of want to keep this spoiler free so that's basically what you get and the fifth season is in reference to the the fifth season which is like it's death basically it's this very it, it refers to like a season that occurs which is um, like an extended period of like winter and like shit it, it gets really really bad um food is scarce etc etc but within the history of this world there have been like different seasons so you've had like the choking season the acid season this season which can reference uh, like a, a an extended period of uh, a few months to you know decades or centuries where the earth itself it's like an ice age but like in in <laughs> like to that scale I mean but it can be anything to like I'm just like looking at here like madness season the eruption of multiple events of an ancient super volcano launched large deposits of dark colored mineral orgite or orgit into the air. The resulting 10 years of darkness was not only devastating in the usual seasonal way, but resulted in a higher than usual incidence of mental illness. So like, that's what I mean. So currently, like something happens in the beginning of the book, someone causes another season by breaking the land apart. And that's basically where we're at like that's that's what happens that's where on this journey of trying to survive but Essen is also trying to find her daughter Nassen or Nassun not too sure how to Essen Nassun Nassen Nassun I feel like it's Nassun anyway Essen is an orogeny she is a very powerful one and you find out her history 
you also find out like in the beginning it, i think it's not a spoiler is it a spoiler no it literally says murdered son so Essen's husband jija when the earth breaks and everyone feels like the aftershocks of it and like the devastation of it Jidra is at home with his son and Essen's son, Yushe, 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 Yushe. And then for some reason, Jidra thinks that Yushe is the reason why the earth breaks. Yushe did not break the earth. He is just an orogeny who reacted to the earth breaking. So Jidra um, killed his son. And so Essen comes home to Yuche's body and her daughter missing and her husband missing. And that's basically what skyrockets her to like go forth and wander, even though it's not a very good idea because a season is upon us. So I loved the way that this was crafted. I think the three different perspectives, especially when we find out who these women are, it just it it was a very interesting way of being able to provide context to these characters like to the character to these characters and understanding them um which i really liked i'm being vague because <laughs> i don't want to spoil it but i i think the biggest thing is how this is a metaphor for the current political and social and cultural experience of black people and people of color of being like a marginalized group in a society both like local and global that is kind of uh what's that word it's like the institutionalization of oppression and violence towards these groups and how society and certain institutions and most institutions are built upon that foundation of violence and racism uh, and oppression and so it's an enslavement because orogenies in this world are enslaved but it's like painted They've tried to paint it in a prettier picture and essentially brainwashed orogenies and the world at large. So it's just like the political commentary in this is just, mwah, it's so good. And I think one of the best aspects of this book um, that I, I just I really loved it. I really, really loved it. I got at some points it actually gets quite like emotionally confronting but like it needs to be emotionally confronting i just yeah I, oh incredible absolutely incredible i am so happy that i that i read this i yeah like absolutely no doubt i understand the hype with this i really do <laughs> and that's what i'm gonna say like this is just fantastic there is plot obviously a lot of plot but it is about the characters and this very interesting, very intricate world. There are a lot of questions. You are left with a lot of questions. There are people that you find out exist called the Stone Eaters that you're like, oh, who? What are they? What does this mean? What are the obelisks? And why is that word so difficult to say? It's just, you're left with a lot of questions at the end of this, which I think is great because in that sense it's kind of like you, you need to pick up the next book which is what I obviously did so uh, I'll talk about the obelisk gate in a moment but yeah the fifth season absolutely stunning incredible um highly recommend highly recommend but it is like a lot it can be a lot but in terms of the second book um, while I'm here I'm going to talk about the obelisk gate as well I think the obelisk gate is good not as good as the first book which I feel like a lot of second books in a series unfortunately uh, that's what happens 
right? This is the Obelisk Gate. So this book takes place immediately after the events of the fifth season of the first book. I thought this was really fun. I really liked it. In this one, we finally get Nassun's, Nassun's perspective, which I really like her voice. I It feels genuine. It feels authentic to, like, her and her age. Um, there's also a character comes back in this that you're quite ambivalent to in the fifth season because you kind of per perceive him as a villain, and I think he's meant to be. Um, he, like, represents the institution. That's why he's a villain, in a, in a way. Um, but in here, he's different. And it's, it's very interesting and it provides a very different uh I don't know nuance to the novel I think um but then we have more of an inclusion of the stone eaters now the stone eaters are people or like entities that are of the earth that are made of stone so the way they travel is through stone but I don't know if they're like organically created from the earth or if they were man-made because that part, that part really confuses me but they exist and they eat stone and we have a couple of characters in here and I really like them I think they're they add a oh, like there's like an alienness to them because they 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 like they've represented that way. They don't walk like humans. They like move through the earth. Uh, and in this one, we have more of this like notion of the earth, like Father Earth, as an actual character, as a sentient part of this world. And through that we get more information about the obelisks. I still don't quite understand the obelisks. I'm going to be honest with you. What the fuck is the obelisk gate? What? I don't... <laughs> and then we have this entire thing about the moon. Because the moon is not where it's supposed to be. And that is why, supposedly, Father Earth is just so mad. <laughs> He's so mad. Um, and that's why seasons happen. Instead of trying to kill people, maybe just like communicate. And as the earth be like, hey, can we get the moon back, please? It's my child. Like, instead of trying to absolutely decimate humanity, talk, communicate. Anyway, so we find out <laughs> that I think the main reason why we want to open the obelisk gate is to help create the power to bring back the earth. So when, the, when not bring back the earth, bring back the moon in its pool with earth. So the moon does pass by earth. We need to grab it and bring it back. And I'm wondering if the obelisks help with the gravitational pull. I don't know. At some point, you just have to vibe with sci-fi. Because <laughs> the more you try and think about it, the more you just are confused. So that's what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> that's what happened here. I've actually finished this. I finished this last night. And it was kind of sad because a character that you meet in the fifth season who is very important to Essen and from her past uh, passes away and I'm kind of worried about how this is going to end and honestly I think the way that this series is going to end the only way that I can foresee it ending is Essen is going to die whether she turns into a stone eater, because if you do certain power with the obelisks, I don't know if it's just like trying to open the obelisk gate or if like over time 
the amount of power that you use from the obelisk it takes away. We, I don't really quite know, but it turns Orogenes into stone. So Essence turning into stone. And I think the way that this series is going to end is her turning to stone and dying or just dying. Like, I don't foresee her living to the end of this series. But I do see Nasun, the daughter, being a very key part of everything. I think Essen is actually not the most powerful Orogony. I think it's her daughter. So, what else do I want to say? Also, just one more thing. Just one thing. I felt like this wasn't quite as good as the fifth season. And I think it's because the questions that you have from the fifth season not don't necessarily get answered in the obelisk gate and yes before you scream at me there still needs to be that level of mystery in order for you to read it but i think at this point like there comes a point where you just need to be like there needs to be clarity about how certain things work and what actually is going on so i, I think contextually we need more information <laughs> just because there's it's such an intricate world that I think there needed to be a bit more clarity pertaining to the intricacies itself and I also excuse me I also think that again especially towards the end of this there comes to a point where you're just like how many times can you destroy a town until it becomes meaningless. Like she's always, Essence always like doing things with no thought to the repercussions of like the aftermath of like the future of that action, if that makes sense. Which I understand like it's a survival mechanism. She's always had to make sure that she survives the moment. You know, it's all about her safety in the moment. But like she just destroys towns left, right and center. And it's like, babe, she doesn't destroy towns left, right, and centre, but that's what it feels like. So, um, because it happens more than twice. <laughs> so it gets like, in itself, it becomes like a trope within this own, within this trilogy because, oh, there we go, she's doing it again. Yeah, so like this one was, it was really good, but it wasn't to the standard, to the extent, I should say, of the fifth season. But I still had a really good time, enough that I've actually started the last book of this trilogy. I started The Stone Sky yesterday, and which is the third book, the conclusion. Um, I'm enjoying it. I think I'm really early into it, so when I get, I feel like when I get to the halfway point, things will start to move along. It kind of feels like it's the same thing over and over again, and which... <laughs> I feel like I'm not making sense. I feel like that's the like this is a sort of dystopian situation. Like they need to worry constantly about food and stuff. But it's like okay, yeah, we get it. But just do the thing. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Anyway, so I'm gonna continue reading, and hopefully finish this, finish the Stone Sky by tomorrow, so that I can upload this video because I'm actually already late. It was supposed to go live today. Then I realised that I wanted to finish this trilogy for this reading vlog, just to get the entire point. Um, so this, I apologise, this vlog is going to be later than usual. It's most likely not going to go live till like Sunday. <laughs> but it's because I want to give good content and I'm having a lot of fun at the moment. So that's my updates. I will most likely speak to you next when I finish The Stone Sky and I'll give you my like thoughts about that book and also just of the trilogy itself. <laughs> what do you have there, Hunter? Yeah. Gotta keep what I can set myself free. <laughs> There must be versus me, that's so many. Honestly, I see no so way funny. of winning. Of Very winning. naughty, though. Yeah, Do you want me to throw your ball? Do you want me to throw your ball? Hell. 
help me. Yes, I can't Are you ready? On myself, so One, two, three. It goes on to me. finished the stone sky literally two seconds ago i've been sitting on the couch wanting to finish this book so i can take this video and edit it and publish it anyway i finished it i really liked it i think it was a really good ending to the trilogy i i do think that the ending the actual ending was a bit too quick I think you spend so much time on the journey towards the end and the end not a lot of page time I don't know I feel like there should have been it should have just we should have been able to sit with it a bit more especially when Essen came but other than that it was really good I give this four stars I think it's a really good uh, ending to a series I really liked Hoa, who is the stone eater. We get his perspective in this and his perspective is where we finally gain more of the um, like history element of like what happened to the moon and what, why do the stone eaters exist and, and what were the stone eaters. And I wish we had his perspective earlier um, I'm trying to remember, because I've read them so quickly, I'm trying to remember if- no, I think this is the only book where we get his perspective back in his time, um, where he's like reminiscing about his past, because he's technically the narrator of this entire trilogy, and you realise why at the end, but even- even though he's the narrator, he doesn't really share much in the first two books. But in this one, we get a bit more. I just wish we had more about the Stone Eaters. <laughs> I feel like, and like the whole like Father Earth thing, we kind of glossed over it. <laughs> so although this is a really great series, I think there are aspects of it that I wish were more given like given them time to explore given time to to grow and develop i don't know i feel tired because i've been reading this series um so quickly but yeah i really liked it is it my favorite one of my favorite series of all time no but it is one that i'm really happy that i read I think the fifth se the fifth season still for me is top tier. It is a really really fantastic book. I just think the Obelisk Gate and the Stone Sky, it kind of goes down a little bit, a little bit. I feel like this I don't know. In some ways, it needed to be a trilogy. In other ways, maybe it could have just been like a really big <laughs> standalone fantasy, because a lot of it is just walking you know it's just like going to places so but other than that really great experience um and that is that <laughs> i can't believe i finished this trilogy so overall overall i think this trilogy is really good who do i recommend it to if i don't know <laughs> if it kind of if it sounds like something that you might be interested in go for it it's very unique and different to a lot of fantasy novels that are out there. You also have a main character, Essen, who is not, you know, like the stereotypical kind of uh, woman in fantasy. She is, she makes a whole lot of mistakes. She has her own kind of moral compass and yeah, like I, I just think N.K. Jemisin writes complex characters really, really well. I think the overall commentary of this series is why it should be on a lot of people's TBRs. 
but it's also just good <laughs> like it's just a good time if you want a good time i highly recommend it um but it can be dense like the language of what's happening luckily there's a glossary at the back but if that's not your vibe then maybe don't read this i at one point like i'm pretty good with like in fantasy worlds when there's like different languages and and words that are created for that for that world i'm pretty good because you kind of on context cues you kind of figure things out but i have to say in this one it was the only book in this series that i had to like reread words and go to the back of the glossary and find out what it meant and then go back like that's really only happened to the extent that it happened in this one and i think it's because we had hoa's perspective the stone eater because he went more into the like magical sciencey aspect of it so that was interesting but yeah that is my thoughts we're concluding this video because i feel like this vlog has gone on for too long i did it unknowingly spontaneously started off the week by reading fifth season and then finishing an entire trilogy as well as reading a random colleen hoover book um which again i'm not going to talk about yet <laughs> i'll most likely talk about uh verity in my what am i in june in my june wrap up but what a weird week seriously anyway thank you so much for watching I hope this was, in any case, in any way, at least enjoyable for you. I am going to go have a cup of tea because I feel like I need a little bit of caffeine and something cosy because it's cold. I'm wearing a thermal. It is so cold. Anyway, see you next week. I apologize for how late this video was. It's like, it's most likely going to be like three or four days late. Three days late. Three days late. Oh, God. Anyway, have a great day, night, afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Take care and stay safe. Bye, friends.